And we'll go up. More skeletons. They actually take two hits to kill if you don't have the upgraded sword yet. But we do. So, one hit kills. Mwahaha! Like I said, that clock freezes time, basically. Another key! I think we want to go to the right. There should be the compass in here. Yes. Ooh. Feeling a bit batty? There we go. You'll notice, even though I've been playing, I'm kind of just winging the situation here. Um, because, regardless of how long I will play this game, I tend to suck if I'm recording. Don't know why. I am really good at this game, actually. But, you know, I just, I get on screen recording, and it's no good. And another thing, no, I am not going to call these monsters by their real names. First of all, most of them I don't even know. Like, those things, those look like water droplets. I'm going to call them water droplets. Uh, the bats, they're called keys. I'm going to call them bats, because they're bats. So, don't get on my case for not calling them um, by their true names. Eastmost Peninsula is the secret, basically. Yeah, I don't know. I believe he's talking about the secret item. There's a dungeon item in some of the dungeons. Not all of them do. Like, Dungeon 2 does not have a dungeon item, I believe. Um... But like this one, you get the bow in it, I believe. So, that's a thing. Skeleton, skeleton, skeleton. Dead, dead, dead. So, eastmost peninsula. Now, if we kill these two... No, never mind. We don't get anything out of that one. Oh, we got a key anyway. Oh yeah, and like I said, if you uh, if you keep pressing pause, you'll see like the map slowly filling out. It will only show rooms that you've actually been in on that map over there. So if you're looking at like the bottom left map, and you look at that map, it'll show you which rooms you've not yet been in. So uh, basically, dodge these spikes here. Uh, you can do that. You can actually get around it before they reach the middle, but you have to have skills that I don't have. And here we have the dungeon item, which is the bow. Boom! boom Don't have any arrows yet, because I was too lazy to go buy them. Um, I think they're 80 rupees, though. So it's not terrible. Now that we... Aha! I did have skills. Oh, but not enough skills, apparently. Um, now that we have the dungeon item, we can go ahead and head towards the boss, and yes, the glowing dot is actually where the Triforce piece is. It's not where the, uh, boss is, because the boss is the room beforehand. Okay, we have gone to that room. We'll go in here. This should have three more of these guys. Basically, if you kill them in here... By the way, the max number of bombs you can hold right now is eight. We get the boomerang, smack an enemy with the boomerang, and they will freeze for a moment. And here we have hands. I believe they're called dungeon masters in this game. Can't exactly remember. Basically, if they grab you, they'll pull you to the very beginning of the uh, the area, or the the map, or the dungeon. They'll take you back to the beginning of the dungeon. And here we have the first boss. Don't know his name. Not even a try. He's Dragon. Single-headed Dragon, excuse me. Three hits, and he's dead. That's three hits with the uh, upgraded sword. I think he takes one more... I think he actually takes five hits with the normal sword. Can't exactly remember. Eh. Anyway, so we picked up that hard container, and we've got the Triforce piece. That is the first dungeon done. We're gonna move right on to the second dungeon. Actually... Do I want to go ahead and pick... Nah. Never mind. I was gonna say, do I want to pick up a... Now. Never mind. Well, Did one of these actually burn? No. 
I may have been way off on that one, but uh, oh well. I was gonna say, do I want to pick up a potion? But no, I'm lazy, and I don't think I'll need it. You'll do, you'll, you'll need bombs for this next um, dungeon, but in the last room before the boss that you'll need the bombs on. Uh, if you kill all the enemies, it'll drop bombs. So uh, don't exactly go out of your way to do it. Um, of course, if you tried to kill the boss and you don't have any bombs anymore, then I'd be worried, sort of, because they'd come in useful, as in you'll kind of need them. Anyway, let's see if this is actually 30 rupees like I thought it was. It's a sacred to everybody. Yep, it is. Get out of here. And now we're finally going to go to the dungeon, too. Um... Even though I get I get got to the screen three times, I was like, oh, we don't want to go here yet. It's Dungeon 2, the Snake. Yes, I believe it's called the Snake. Um, I'm trying to determine or not I actually want to pick up the compass and the um, map in every dungeon, because I don't necessarily need it. Um, I know how to get through the dungeon. Like this one, you basically just go straight up, to be honest. One of the rooms, you'll go off to the right to pick up the magical boomerang, which will basically go across the entire screen instead of only a certain distance. But other than that, there's nothing else to pick up in here. So. Okay, so let's get started. First off... Is this called the snake? It's either the snake or the moon. I don't think this one's the moon yet. There's snakes in it, though. Keys! Ba-boom. Right, so like I said, I'm trying to determine, do I want to go and get the map and the compass? Should I go ahead and just explore? Should I explore every dungeon? I'm not going to explore Dungeon 9, no doubt about that. That would take forever. Not going to do it. And there's no point to it, really. Well, I suppose there is sort of a point. You can get the red ring in Dungeon 9, I believe. Well, it also depends. I am going to be getting the magical key. So, that's like the skeleton key to everything. Uh, at that point, it won't w matter if you pick up keys at all. Because, uh... You'll have them... On your person. Or, you have the magical key, which unlocks every door. So... Oh yeah, for those guys, if you kill the boss one first, um, all the others will disappear. And we're going to keep going up until, yes, there is a door open to the right. Basically, in this room, there is an upgraded version of what we had just killed in the previous room. The boomerang flying guys. Uh, these guys, if you kill all three of these guys, um, while dodging around these beams of whatever, um, basically, you get the magical boomerang. Which can fling across the entire room. And it replaces your old boomerang, so. And we're gonna go up, kill this guy. Not too difficult. Not a lot of anything's gonna be difficult at the be beginning of this game because we've got the upgraded sword already. Um, we've got the upgraded armor. Um, so, a lot of things are gonna be pretty simple here at the very beginning. Um, won't start getting really difficult until, say, Dungeon 5, in my opinion. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Come on. And welcome to the boss, this is Dodongo. Um, basically... Um, wait for him to come face at you, and you throw a bomb in front of his face. 
give him two of them, and I believe he's dead. Done. Pick up the heart container. And we could try Force Piece and be done. I'm wanting to say this was called the Moon, actually. Doesn't look like a snake, in my opinion. It could. I didn't fill out the rest of the map, obviously. Anyway, so straight from here, right on to Dungeon 3. Um, Dungeon 3 is back towards the beginning. So we're going to go back to the first screen. Ooh, there we go. So, an interesting thing that happened recently. I've got the Resident Evil series book. I didn't even know Resident Evil um, had a book series. I've got the books now. Um, there's like Zero Hour, and then books one through six of like the Umbrella Conspiracy. So I'm going to be reading through those, and once I've read through them, I may uh, decide to go ahead and finally do Resident Evil 2. It's been a while since I played a Resident Evil game. Uh, well, not a Resident Evil. A true Resident Evil game, let me rephrase that. Because I have played Resident Evil 5 recently. But, and Revelations. Revelations was actually really good. Um, compared to Resident Evil 5 and 4. And I know there's some conspir- er, controversy, excuse me, between that. I just didn't really like it. They're not... They're not... And I'm not saying Revelations by any means is... Like the original Resident Evil's survival horror style. Um, oh yeah, this cave basically, we'll use this and we can pick up the potion. Basically, um, this medicine over here for 40 will completely heal you, but it's only one time. This one has two charges. So, we'll go ahead and pick that up. I probably won't have to use it um, anytime soon yet. Um, don't quote me on that. Let's see, and we'll go left, down, and right. But Resident Evil Revelations was not anything close to the original. I just thought it was really good compared to Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5. But I'm, not, I'm not saying I have something completely against those games. They're, they are unique and good in their own ways. They just did not capture my fancy as much as Revelations did. And I have the 3DS version of that game. Um... So, um, I'm not going to say it's my favorite 3DS game that I own, but it's got to be one of them. My favorite's got to be Dream Drop Distance, even though it took me forever to even want to play that. But I finally got to it over the summer. Um, because I was kind of like, I already spoiled the, the ending for myself, um, because I, I don't know. Something about the style of the game I just did not enjoy. Um, enjoy at all. Um, and I'm not gonna say... I don't know, the whole dream... Drop... No, not dream eating. The whole drop system, I did not like. Um, because when I get into a game, um, and I'm playing like or not into a game, but into a world in Kingdom Hearts, I want to play it start to finish, right? So when you screw the, up the system where I can't finish a level until I've dropped and gone to Riku's side, um, I'll be in the middle of a level, and then all of a sudden I'll have to switch to a whole different story, because you can be ahead worlds at a time. Um... because of this drop system. And, like, you'll have to switch from being at one world story to switching to a completely other, uh, complete other world story that you could have previously um, completed using Sora, or if you completed it first as Riku, and you're redoing some of the story as the other character, or switching to a completely new story that you haven't experienced yet. And it's just kind of like, I don't like that style. 
so I didn't like Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance as much as... And, uh, I don't like any of the, like, mobile versions of the Kingdom Hearts games, because they're just odd. I liked Birth by Sleep. Birth by Sleep was for PSP, though. I didn't like any of the DS versions of the game. So I think when Kingdom Hearts 2.5, uh... Dash 2 Remix comes out, I'm going to enjoy Dr Dream Drop Distance a lot more. Um, I wish that Square Enix had decided, or Team Team Kingdom Hearts had decided to, uh, instead of just doing the cutscenes for the Nintendo DS versions, had switched it over like they did, they're doing with Dream Drop Distance um, to a PS format of control. I think that would have been really good, because I want to play those games, but because they're on DS, I just don't enjoy them as much. Which is what gets me back to Resident Evil Revelations. Revelations, I don't like DS games very much, and usually if you're going to have like a mainstream game like that, um, switch over to the DS version, usually the DS version is milk or not milked down, but uh, watered down very much to where it's not even anything close to what the console version of the game is. Resident Evil Revelations was very close to what the console version was, as far as I am aware, and I do have to applaud Capcom on that much. Sorry, was interrupted there. Alright, so, what was I saying? Applaud Capcom. They did a really good job on Revelations um, for the DS, because I don't like a lot of DS games, uh, or DS versions of games. If it's made for the DS, then I've liked it. If it's not made, and it's just like a, uh, like the DS version of what would be on the console, usually I do not tend to like them. But I loved Revelations, and I've played it several times through. I'm wanting to say I've already been in this room. Yes, I have. Okay. Um, so good job, Capcom. Now, we're not going to go to the right. I'm going to go straight up. I don't exactly remember what all is in this dungeon, to be honest. So, I'm going to explore. I know I didn't find the compass in the map in the last one, so... Hello, did you get the sword from the old man on top of the waterfall? Yes, I did. See, it is shiny and nice. There's actually only a key in here. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh yeah, this dungeon, I believe, is called the Manji. Looks like a swastika, but actually, um, the Manji is a sign from Buddhism, and Zelda comes from Japan. So, yeah. It's not a swastika, it's the Manji, and it is a holy sign from Buddhism, if I remember correctly. Um, so, yeah. We're gonna go to the right now. Religion is a thing that kind of disturbs me. Like, it's almost too scary to talk about because of all the different. Like, I don't judge people based on their religion um, because everyone's allowed to have their own opinion. You can worship what you wish. If you want to worship the flying spaghetti monster, be my guest. You are allowed to have your own beliefs and just like. So many people are furious for people having their own beliefs that it's scary to talk about religion in any kind of circumstance. So, you know, um, the only reason I brought it up just then was to explain what the Manji was. And now I'm going to shush. I might die in this next room. I don't know. I might. I may not. Uh, basically, the easiest way to deal with him is actually place some bombs around. Place a couple well... Unlike that one. Well-placed bombs, and you can actually get him in one hit. If you're lucky. I am not gonna die right here. <laughs> so remember when I said I didn't want to use my potion at this point in the game yet? So 
so I just used my potion at this point in the game. Boom, boom. Heart container. And did I actually explore every room? I did. Go me. Grab the trap. Triforce piece. Oh yeah, so you might have noticed in my last couple of Let's Plays, I'm not doing the traditional uh, playing for 20 minutes and then stopping the recording and being like, Oh, by the way, um, basically, uh, with the new recorder setup, um, what I'm doing is I'm just playing the game um, and cutting off after every 20 minutes. Um, just about, anyway. Or is it 30 minutes? I think I'm cutting off every 30 minutes. Um, because it's just easier that way uh, to just keep recording because of the way that this recorder setup is. Now, we got the raft in the previous dungeon. And if we wanted to, we could go pick up a heart container right now, but there's two of them in the same area. So we'll go ahead and do this dungeon first, and then we'll do another collect collecting spree. Because after this dungeon, we can collect the remaining items that we need to pick, pick up. Um, level 4, what are you called? I don't remember. Oh well. I believe the boss in here is a two-headed dragon. Could be wrong. Yeah. But, um, let's see. These are gargoyle looking things. Basically, you hit them once and they will turn into two bats. When we get uh, the next sword upgrade, which we will be getting after this dungeon, um, if you hit them, or that version of them. I think there's an upgraded version of them as well. But if you hit that version of them with the upgraded sword, it won't turn into bats, it will just die. Alright, so this is the first dark room. Now if you have a blue candle, throw it in this room, and voila, it is brights now. Oh, I forgot to explain, you have to have full hearts in order to do the sword shooty B thing. Um, it's really not... I don't want to say it's not useful. The shooting the sword beam thing is pretty useful. Um, I don't tend to use it, unless it's like the dragon bosses, so... Take from that what you will. Um, I don't tend to use them, really. Uh, I also don't tend to be at full health, so that could be another thing <laughs> that you take in consideration there. Now, we need to pick up the dungeon item before we can actually complete this dungeon, if I remember right. Um, because we need to be able to cross water. Basically, we get the bridge. I don't want to call it a ladder, but we'll call it a bridge. And what the bridge does is, those are like likes. If you let one get a hold of you, I believe it will get rid of your big shield. Yes, it does. So I'm going to have to spend 90 more rupees to get another shield. That's nice. And now we're going to move you to the side, and the dungeon item should be down here. Yes. And it's like a little step ladder. Acts like a bridge, so we shall call it the bridge. And I'm pretty sure at the very beginning it tells you, like, the whole list of items um, in a little scroll down dun, 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 in the main menu. But, uh, you know, I don't pay attention to that stuff. And basically, as you can see, it lets you walk over uh, one block of, like, water and such. It can be useful, actually, like, if you're fighting the armor guys and you um, are on bridge sections like this, you can just go off here and they can't actually attack you while you're on the bridge section right here because they can't get on your bridge so like get into a little section like that and you're basically good you don't have to dodge around them or anything you can just wait for them to walk in front of you 
pretty useful. What do we have in here? Don't have anything, right? That's the dungeon map. Maybe if I look at it, I'll be able to tell what the name of the dungeon is. Some of them, it'll say like, oh, this is dungeon is a, uh, I don't know, two-faced liar, and it won't look anything like a two-faced liar. So some of them, I don't understand where they get the name from, but... Like, I can remember, I can understand Death Mountain being the shape of a skull. That one's cool. And that's Dungeon 9, of course. That's where Ganon reigns. At least in this game. Um, if you've played any of the newer games, Death Mountain's always where the fat, lazy Gorons are. So, let's see. I think this one's Snake, actually. So the, f the second one was Moon, this one is Snake. Oh yeah, so this guy's this is the first mini-boss um, battle in a dungeon that we've ran into. Come on! I will kill- No! I died! And basically it will start you at the beginning of the dungeon with three hearts. Which sucks. Alright, doing this again. I'm not going to worry about healing, to be honest. Um, because... I should be able to kill... Now, the boss is going to respawn the other three parts of it, but it, a well-placed bomb... And I should be good... I think. Maybe. I might heal. <laughs> it's only 68 rupees. I'm not entirely too worried about it. So, maybe... Maybe I'll go ahead and heal. You know what? Yes, I will. It is only 68 rupees. And cross over here. And up heal. And cross here. Wanting to say we go straight up, right? Yes. And yes, he did respawn, but we have bombs. Ba boom! Well placed bomb, and three of them gone already. Boom. Continuing on. Walk into the waterfall. Now that's really not important. Like, I already know what to do for that, so. Meh. Not important to me. Candle, let's brighten up the situation. Set it on fire! Don't set things on fire, kids. It's not safe. Or at least be safe if you're going to set things on fire. I'm not going to say it's not safe to set things on fire. Um, some, some things set on fire can lead to a good time. Like a bonfire. Bonfires are nice. Uh, be safe, though. That's been your helpful... Helpful tips with D-Home. There you go. 